Yeah, it's cool. Sit right. Here. My father would like to do them. I'm just moving. Mm -hmm. They feel like they're having a conversation while I sit at this table. Okay. You know, you know. What up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Black Talk. 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 Black you don't scratch my table up. Hey, come on, do that, man. Don't, don't take my balls off in front of you two. Come on, man. You got 2,000 people going to see this, y'all. My bad. No way. No, you ain't. She said then she wink her eye. Hey, anyway, let's talk about efficiency. So, you know, we back to the kickers when we talk about efficiency. And why I love them so much. And why they have my number one spot is for people asking, what is your favorite eight? Kicker, but now we're gonna talk about subwoofer efficiency. The big four, or well, the big three in this case, is Ryan's not all that. Ryan subs are not all that efficient. But J Audio, Fallsgate, and Kicker, you notice that all these subwoofers have high efficiency. They have high SPL ratings. They're not inefficient subwoofers. The reason why they have high SPL ratings because contrary to contrary to the trend. It's going on the day to say, hey, man, power is cheap. So we can get subwoofers low, low efficiency. Don't worry about it. Ask yourself this. Who benefit is it that power is cheap when they sell you inefficient subwoofer? Who do you benefit? Do you erroneously believe it is to your benefit? So you buy a subwoofer that has a, a efficiency that is lower than most subwoofers in this area. Let's look at the eights, for instance. These high dollars, sub eight inches that everybody loves and want me to get, and I'm gonna have to get them to test them to try them out. But I already tell you, this inefficient design, and it has a smaller cone than this, so you only gonna get a certain amount of output from a certain amount of cone area if the performance level is being met. All of the factors being equal. Whoever's got the largest air, who's ever moving the most air is going to be the loudest. It takes space to make bass. Whoever moves the most air is going to be the loudest. So, let's look in the 8 inch junior. All these 8s that everybody wants, like Sundown X8, uh, SA8, uh, CT Sounds Mezio, Scar ZVX8, uh, and that's, that's Mezio 8, uh, Massive 8. Uh, do you look at the sensitivity ratings in these subwoofers? Most of them add 79, 79 to 80. 79 to 80 SPL. So you say, yeah, but what about X Max Motor Force? Mm, mm hmm. Okay. The greater the, the greater the MMS, the heavier the cone, the greater the BL. That's all that's for. That's all that's for. But let's look into the efficiency of turning the signal into noise. The SPL reading when it comes to sub subwoofers. 7980. And you got a subwoofer that's 83. 83 on this one. Uh, almost 83 on the Toro. 83 on the Audio Legion. SW2508. Uh, what, 82 on the JL? Yeah, 82 on the Robert Fosgate. See, I know it matter, man. Like the manufacturer say, that doesn't matter because power is cheap. Let's talk about this power thing. So you get an inefficient driver, you get cheap electrical. I mean, you get cheap amplifier to power the inefficient driver. So you get two, I don't know, two eights. I'm not going to bash anybody. I say you get two eights to 750 RMS, and they're underrated. They really take a 1,000. Hmm. They take 750 continuous, but they can take a 1,000 on peak. So now it's 1,500 watts. I tell you that most of you who have cars or trucks, you only have 135, maybe 150 amp alternator. That alternator was designed primarily first for one thing, the electrical needs of the vehicle. So if you got the most top end 150 amp alternator, you cannot run a fit. You can, you can, but you will not get all the performance out of it. You cannot, you can run an amplifier that's higher than your alternator rating, but for how long? Before you burn your alternator out, or you came, or the alternator can't meet the demands of the amplifier, and then let's get into this power. Is, this the power is cheap these days. Yeah, they give you a boatload of power, especially with this full bridge technology, at the expense of control that the amplifier has on the subwoofer. 
The dampening factor sucks on these high power amplifiers. I've seen them. I've been reading them. And it's some it's some it's some amplifiers out there that y'all scream and rave about. Full bridge technology. All of them. With a dampening factor less than 90. It's in the manual. So as you go down on low, your amplifier, which is what you're listening to, this is a passive device. This does not get loud on its own. It's passive. The active is the amplifier. What you're listening to in your system, as I said in my other videos, you are listening to the performance of your amplifier sending a signal to a subwoofer that should meet the performance level and the demands of the amplifier. So you got an amplifier that puts out a shit ton of power, what we call dirty power, has no dampening factor. Signal noise radio sucks. THD is, on some of them they say, greater than 1%. And you want to put that on your app, on your sub. Let's look at all my videos and review. One ohm. It's not a control, it's two ohm. Two ohm is not a control, it's four ohm. But amplifiers do give out they more power to less resistance. But you get, you got to, to get all this power, you got to give up something on some brand's equipment. You got to give up something. Hoffman's Iron Law. I can give you a shit ton of power. I don't mean I'm going to be able to control it. I give you a shit ton of power, 5,000, 2,000 watts. Y'all throw them inside with these four gauge, uh, they need three, I think a full bridge amp with uh, 3,000 watts, four gauge wire. How the hell, how that gonna happen? 300 amps gonna go through that four gauge wire? 300 amps gonna go through that four gauge wire? Can you say call the fire department? Can you say that? Call the fire department. He brand new pill, go burnt up. Why? You try to put 300 amps through a four gauge wire, that's why. And there's no control. That's why you always hear my eye blue. This uh, can't take the full power of this amp. Yeah, not if it's clipped. Now the amp's already clipping because you ain't got a, you ain't got power going in. Yeah, it's cheap, but you gotta do other things to support this cheap power. The amp cheap, but now you gotta boost your electrical up to supply the amp so it can power the passive device, which is the subwoofer. This is, this does not get loud by itself. I don't care how much you spend on the subwoofer. This this would not make you loud because, oh, I bought a kicker L7 Kukla because MB said such and such. Now, this ain't going to make you loud. You're listening to the amplifier. It helps, though, to have an efficient driver. Look at that SPL ring. It helps to have an efficient driver unless you just want to go around and say, yeah, I got 3,000 watts going in those two eights. Mm. And what's your DB level? Uh, here. Mm. Well, I got... A thousand going to my tool, and I'm meeting the same DB level. What you more impressed by? It don't. It 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 does take power in a way to get loud because this is a passive device, so it takes power to get loud. But you want to look at the efficiency of the driver. Then you need to look at the efficiency of the entire system. Subwoofer enclosure is in. Amplify is it good? Take is this signal noise ratio greater than 150? I mean, greater than 100? False gate is <laughs> is adapting the factor greater than 200? False gate is kickers too. J Audio as well. In fact, J Audio got some amplifiers out there, man. The adapting the factor is 250. Remember, I told you about adapting the factor, it's the ability of the amplifier to control the sub as it plays music. The ability of the amplifier to control the sub as it plays music. What you listen to when you're listening to a subwoofer is the amplifier. How it starts and stops. If the, if the subwoofer can meet the performance level that the amplifier demands, you get bass that you like. If you got an inefficient driver, and you got about shit tons of power, then you got to support the electrical to support that shit ton of power. Who does that benefit? Hey, here, buy this inefficient subwoofer. And also, what are you doing? Do y'all know what just happened, man?
it was a, it was a pregnant pause in there because I said something that sounded like S I R I, and Apple, this heifer woke up and and, and now she wanted. Anyway, <laughs> so now if I say here, take this inefficient driver. Hey, and by the way, I got this cheap power. I'll say who benefits that? Instead of buying one device, one component, they can operate on that glitch what you have. Now you got to buy this one and this one. I, oh, by the way, this same brand maker also sell you the amp too. Man, it benefits them. You send these kids through college and then try to figure out how you going to pay the twins on yours because now you had to buy two products when you could have just bought one. Get you in it. Get you. Don't, don't listen to the, the, the herd mentality. Watch the video on that, the herd mentality. Don't do what everybody else is doing. Think for yourself, man. Get your efficient self ride. This is a uh, self wolf. It's almost, would you go out there and run around by a truck to get, you know, get nine miles to the gallon? And guys around here driving 22 and 24? Efficiency works, doesn't it? Yes, efficiency works. I want to get more bang for my buck. I want efficiency. I don't want to suck with it. I got a ton of shit, ton of power to. To get loud. Remember, I told you, most of y'all just street beaters anyway. Y'all ain't walking around with no five, six, ten thousand dollars $10,000 in the system. The most you want to spend $15,000, 2000 and get loud. Some of you don't even want to spend that. You want to spend $1,000 and get loud. You want to do that, you're going to get your official sub subwoofer, man. You're going to get the subwoofer that gets loud as quickly as possible on any power. And that's what I got to say. And that's why this is <laughs> Mocone area, 83 dB, performance levels there. Yeah. Gets loud very, very quickly. This is the new king. <laughs> Hats off to all the rest of them I'm going to try. But if you're going to ask me, hey, man, what's the best 8 inch out there? Uh, keep class. Yeah. Probably in the 10, 11, and 12, too. Efficiency. That's why the big boys, J Audio, Rock Falls Gate, Kicker, they don't make woofers with these crazy 3,000 watts on there. You know, so you got two of them in your car. 6,000 watts. If he can handle that. But let's say he can handle 6,000 watts. That's a 600 amp draw. You're going to have to put some money to your ledger to run both them 12s. To attain, I don't know, 150 dB. Hmm. It's a guy on YouTube taking two kicker Q-Class 12s doing 150 dB. The Wolf is already at 1,000 watts on this. On the 12, I think the sensitivity is 90 or 91. Beat that. Efficiency. I don't know. I know what this is. I know this 83. <laughs> efficiency, man. So what for efficiency? What I always preach to y'all, cone area is king. We talk about these subs, cone area is king. Performance levels being met, cone area is king. The second thing we're going to talk about, I'm beating your head again. Efficiency. Efficiency. Subwoofer for efficiency. Forget what these manufacturers tell you because power is cheap. Don't pay attention to the SPL meet the SPL level. Pay attention to the SPL level. That subwoofer is gonna get a lot louder, quicker than the one that's inefficient. Peace, NBE. If you don't like it, get off my channel. <laughs>